Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make comic book panels using Clip Studio Paint Pro. So I've already launched Clip Studio Paint. I'm going to go up here to the top left to Paint, and that's going to load the painting application. Then we'll want to go ahead and go to File, New, and up here at the top we can choose different presets. Let's choose Comic. And that'll give us some options for comic books. So for example, if you wanted to choose specifically one of these standard sizes here, you could do that. Or you could put in a custom size if you wanted to. However, if you wanted to create a comic for the web, then you should go to All Comic Settings. And that'll give you more options if you wanted to choose a screen size. For example, 1920 by 1080 is a standard HD size. So if you wanted your comic to be able to be full size on a standard screen, this would be a good setting to choose. However, if you were planning on printing your comic, then you would want to choose one of the print settings. You have some other options that you can choose from here for the paper color, but this is all stuff that you can change later. The primary unit of measurement for web images is pixels, but if for some reason you wanted to change that and see what it is in inches, then you can change that up here in the top right. Let's leave it at pixels. This will work for our comic book artboard size. So I'll go ahead and go with these settings here and I'll click on OK. And now this is our full page for our comic. I'm going to make a web comic, but you could follow along creating a print comic if you wanted to. One of the coolest things about Clip Studio Paint is that it has a lot of tools that make it really easy to create comic books. One of those tools is called the Frame Border. Let's click on that. And we can do some different things with this. We can create a frame that's a rectangle, a polyline. We can draw it with a frame border pen. We can cut the frame borders. We can divide the frame folder or divide the frame border. So let's go ahead and just create a frame. Let's do a rectangle frame. And let's go ahead and just put this right here. Now, if you wanted to take the time to line this up precisely and make it perfectly even on all sides, you could do that. I'm just going to be a little sloppy here because this is a demonstration. So once we've created our main frame, then we can go to Cut Frame Border. And with Divide Frame Folder selected, we can either click once to go ahead and divide. This will divide vertically. You can do an undo there if we don't want to keep that. Or you can drag. And if I drag and I hold Shift, then I could divide it horizontally. Or if I wanted a diagonal division, I could draw that as well. So now I'd have two different panels and I could very quickly go through here and just cut this up and very quickly make my panels like so. I'm going to go ahead and start over because I had yellow selected for my border. If I wanted it to be black, I'd want to select black first. Go back to create frame. If you wanted a polyline frame, you could do that. You don't have to have a rectangle frame. It could be something a little more abstract like this. This could be the frame or you could use the frame border pen and you could simply just draw your frame if you want it to be kind of hand drawn looking. And you could do something like that. And then you can still go to cut frame border and you can still divide it up. Now you might be wondering what is the difference between divide frame folder and divide frame border. If you divide the frame folder, what it's gonna do is it's going to create a separate layer. So each of these different panels can be their own separate layer. And that could be really helpful if you wanted to work on them individually. I'll go ahead and show you what happens if I do that. Watch over in the layers palette over on the right. It creates a new layer here. So now I have this frame here on a layer and this frame here on a layer. If I do an undo and I switch to divide frame border and I create that same cut, then it's just doing that on that same layer and I still have both of these panels together on the same layer. The advantage to using divide frame folder is that once your frame is on a separate layer, then it gives you more options for drawing within that panel without drawing on any of the other panels. So to show you, I've created that layer here for this panel. And if I click on normal layer, which is the layer underneath, a mask has been created above that layer. And so we won't be able to paint outside of this shape essentially. So if I switch to a paintbrush now, and then maybe India ink, and I'll go with smooth here, I draw some lines, I cannot draw outside of that panel. So that's very helpful. All of my artwork will automatically stay within that panel. And if I want to go to the other panel and draw within that panel, then my art stays only within that panel. And so that can be the advantage. And then everything is nice and organized. You could label it all and sort it all, which is very important because once your comic becomes very complicated, you're going to have a lot of layers. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the panel tool. And I'll go ahead and divide this again, and I can actually divide my panels with pre-existing artwork. So you can see it automatically took that artwork and it moved it over to the appropriate layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly divide this one up here. This will be my comic, and then I'll really quickly just draw some little characters here in the first panel. Let's have a little stick figure here. 
Now, I'm just doing this for example's sake. I'm not going to take the time to draw a comic. If you want to see me draw something other than stick figures, you can check out some of my other videos. So we got that stick figure up there at the top. We can go to the next panel down here. We can zoom in closer. Maybe the stick figure is saying something now. And he has his arm up in the air and he's making an exclamation. We'll go to the next one. Even closer. Maybe he's really saying something now. And then we'll go to the next panel. And maybe he's very tiny and who knows what's going on here. I'm just making this up. So we have all of our panels with our artwork. Now we're going to need some word bubbles or some text to know what's going on. So we can add some text here with the text tool. We can put in some text and then we can just drag that text to make it bigger. I'll go ahead and click on the O to apply that. I'll go ahead and fix my text here. There's a typo there. That text appears as a layer within that grouping of panels for this particular panel, so everything is still nice and organized. If I wanted to move that around, I could select the Move tool and I could reposition it wherever I want. Let's go ahead and leave it there. Let's move on to the next panel down here. Make sure that's selected. Let's go ahead and add a word bubble this time by selecting the Word Bubble tool. We can choose a balloon. We can choose a flash. We have all kinds of options here. So I'm just going to do a regular balloon. I'll draw it like that. And then we can choose a tail. I'll go ahead and select balloon tail and we'll simply just drag off of the bubble to put the little tail going that way toward the mouth. We can also choose the bend. We can have it bend with a polyline if we want to. So for example, we can click here to make different points and then double click to end it. And we can have a word bubble like that. Or we can change it to spline and then we can just have it kind of curve like that and then double click to make a point. We can adjust the width of the tail too. You just don't want it to be too big. We could have it be a bit thicker or we can have it be really skinny. But again, you don't want it to be too skinny. Otherwise, you won't be able to see it. And then, of course, we could take that type tool and we could put some text within that word bubble and it stays nice and centered. We can make it say, can anyone hear me? And I'll go ahead and just scale this up, holding Alt to scale it from the center. And I can just move that text around just by dragging it. I can double click on it to edit the text. And otherwise, if I drag on it, I can just move it around wherever I want it. So there's our text for our word bubble. Let's move on to the next panel. Let's try a different kind of word bubble. Let's try a curved balloon. And we just simply draw in our little shape that we want here. And we can take a tail and drag off of that. This will be a thought balloon one with the little dots like that. If you wanted to use the pencil, you could just hand write in the text too if you wanted to. We'll need to create a new layer above that to write on. We'll go ahead and write the text in the word bubble there. And then let's go to the next panel and let's choose yet another kind of balloon, which is the balloon pen. And we could draw on our balloon like this, select our balloon tail and make it a bit thicker. And I'll use the spline method and I'll put in a tail there. And just like last time, we'll select the pencil. We'll create a new layer and we can write in. Oh, hey, that's not very nice. Where's the eraser at? Let's just erase that. Do you believe this guy? Let's go ahead and write in something more appropriate. Ah, that's much better. Now, if you wanted to continue creating layers, you can do that. If you wanted to add color, you can add a color on a separate layer. For example, if I wanted to go back to this panel here in the middle, I can create a new layer. Make sure that that new layer is beneath my line layer. So it may be helpful to start naming these layers. I could call this layer color and I could call this layer ink, for example. And on the color layer, I could select my paintbrush, maybe the watercolor, whatever it is that you want to paint with. And then I can go in here and I can color behind my lines without coloring over them. Now, there's lots of tools that you could use to color this in. You could fill it in with paint buckets and things like that. And so you don't have to fill in your color this way, but if you want kind of a more of a hand drawn look, then you could certainly do it this way. So I could have my face here and then I could sample my background color and put my eyes back in like so. And I could put all of these different colors on separate layers as well. So for example, I could create another new layer, make sure that that's beneath my color. I'll just call this BG for background and I could choose a color for the background and then just fill it in that way. Now, because I'm using watercolors, the paint kind of overlaps on itself a little bit. So we'd see these colors blend together. But if you used a more opaque paint, 
then you wouldn't see the colors blending together so much. So I am well aware that this is the world's worst comic, but it's an example of how you can create your own comic, and of course you can take as much time as you like. Let's take a look at a few more options for the word balloons here. I'm back on the word balloon tool. I can choose the line color and the fill color for these bubbles. Right now the line is defined by the main color and the fill is defined by the subcolor. This is the main color here, this is the subcolor here. But you could also choose a specific user color. So for example, if I wanted it to be red, then I could just double click here to fill that with red. I'll go ahead and choose black for my stroke color. And now if I draw a bubble, it's going to be red and black. Now it's merging together with that other bubble because that was already there, so I want to make sure that when I draw it they don't touch. Now as far as I know, there's not a way to change the word bubble color after you've already created it, although there are some workarounds which I'll show you in a minute, so you're going to want to make sure that you get that color right the first time. These word bubbles are vector, and so you can go to this tool here, which is correct line, and you can actually manipulate that shape if you want it to be a little bit wobbly or something like that. Now if I wanted to change the color, one of the ways I could do that is I could right click on that balloon layer and I can rasterize it. And then I could select the paint bucket, select the color that I want to fill it. If that's white, then I'll choose white and then just click to fill it. Now the downside to doing that is that if we zoom in, you're going to see some red pixels along the edge. And if I fill it again, it starts to kind of get more and more of those, but it starts to make the edge really jagged. If we look at the inner edge versus the outer edge, there's a lot of aliasing. And so that's going to make your edges look really rough and really unprofessional. So although you can change the color of the word bubbles, it's best just to get it right the first time. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that layer. Going back to the word bubble tool, we can also change the different figures here. We could have a polygonal word bubble if we wanted to, or we could have a square or rectangular word bubble. I'm going to go back to the elliptical one. We can also change the brush shape here, and you can get some different options for the outline. Now while I'm working on this current word bubble layer, if I continue drawing word bubbles, they're going to merge with that word bubble into a single word bubble, which might not be what I want. In order to make those bubbles separate, what I'll need to do is just make sure that I click off of that word bubble layer onto a different layer, and then when I draw another word bubble now, it's going to appear on its own layer. Let's go ahead and switch now to the curve balloon, and then we'll change the curve to straight, and then I'm going to make kind of an exclamation here just by creating these little points like this. And I could have a word bubble like that. Of course, we'll want to add a stroke to that. So let's try that again. And we could have something like that for the word bubble. If for some reason you didn't want the corners to be pointed, you can also uncheck this here. And now when I draw my star shape, the corners are not as sharp. If we put these side by side, then you'll be able to see exactly what that's doing. If we increase the brush size quite a bit and we round the corners, it'll be a lot more noticeable. Now it has nice rounded edges. So because I don't want this tutorial to be too long, I'm not going to go too much more in depth into these tools, but this should be enough to get you set up making your first comic book panels. If you're interested in learning more about creating comic panels with Clip Studio Paint Pro, you can comment and let me know. Let's just go ahead and wrap this up by showing how we save this as a finished product. So we go to File, Export Single Layer, and you can choose any of these options here. I'm going to recommend PNG if you're going to post this on the web. If file size is an issue, or if the place that you're uploading to wants you to use JPEG, JPEG is okay, but just know that JPEG is going to compress your image, meaning that it'll throw away some detail in order to make the file size smaller. So that can do things like make your image blocky or alter the colors. So I would say go ahead and go with PNG. If you wanted to export this and bring it into Photoshop or Corel Painter or any other application to paint in backgrounds or do the artwork there, you can export as the cross-compatible PSD file format. So you could work between Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, Corel Painter, and lots of other applications. You don't have to only draw your comics inside of Clip Studio Paint. If you don't like Clip Studio Paint's drawing tools, you can use other drawing tools and just make the panels in Clip Studio Paint. So I'm going to go ahead and choose PNG. And I'll go ahead and just save this as test. There's a lot of settings here, but you don't have to worry about these. Let's just go ahead and click on OK. It's going to show us what we're going to export. That looks fine. Click on OK. And here's the comic panel that I created. Now what I just saved there was the PNG, and that wasn't all of these layers and all of this information that I put in here. So that PNG is just one flat image. I'm not going to be able to edit the text on that. So I also need to make sure that I go to File, and then choose Save As, and I could call this Comic Master, that way I know that it's the master copy with all of the layers, and I'll save it in the Clip Studio format. As long as it's in that Clip Studio format, I'll be able to edit it as I'm doing here.
you'll always want to save a master copy of your work as that Clip Studio format. Even if you're going to work between Photoshop or other applications, I recommend that you save a copy as a PSD because the PSD file format doesn't support word balloons and some of the other things that are proprietary to Clip Studio Paint Pro. So as you can see, it's very easy to create comic book panels using Clip Studio Paint Pro. If you've ever tried to do it in other applications by manually drawing all of these rectangles and trying to line everything up, you'll know that it can be a real hassle. So this is gonna save you a lot of time. I highly recommend this application for creating comics. If you found this tutorial helpful, help me continue making videos like this for free on YouTube by supporting my channel at patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. You'll get access to behind the scenes content, early releases of my videos, and digital art resources that aren't available to the general public. And if this is your first time on my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art videos like this that you can watch right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.